Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. A lot of people suggested that I build some kind of replacement for a battery drill for my full auto shooters that's based on rubber. So I've been thinking about is it possible to build a rubber based engine like a motor that uses rubber as a medium for storing muscle energy. And here is my first attempt. Let me show you its features. As you see it consists of two wheels, this big wheel and the smaller wheel that also has a detachable winch. You know this is actually attached by magnets so you can put this over it and then it snaps on it. And um, this actually is also the spool for spooling up rubber that is under tension. And it also has this blocking device that you can use to trigger the stored energy. Now the way how you cock this is that you start winding and you see the rubber really is now spooled onto the small wheel here. And the big wheel is turning a little bit, but just only a little bit to feed more rubber. And then at some point I can stop, remove my little winch handle here and release the entire action. Now why do we need the big wheel? Well simply because the rubber must be kept under tension the whole time. Otherwise if there is slack then there would be nothing that the wheel can pull against. So let me take this off to so see it is under tension. And if I take it off, the total rubber length is about 67 centimeters. And I'd actually have to stretch it out for like a meter or so to get the same tension. So I could replace the wheel simply with a long, 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 long you know, piece of wood or something that keeps it pre-stretched. But that would make the entire motor way too bulky. So I'm using this wheel, actually has a polished rim here, so that the rubber is not damaged. Okay, this wheel takes about 100 centimeters of rubber. And um, again, you know, this is now slightly pre-stretched and you can already see that it is pre-stretched. And now when I start turning, I'm spooling this up and I can actually do this about seven windings. Let's do it. One. Six, and now the last one, seven windings. There you go. And now you can see that the rubber is evenly stretched here and over the entire wheel. And now we got about well, roughly 175 centimeters of rubber spooled up here and another 100 centimeters here and about, you know, I don't know, 20 centimeters here as free float. So the rubber is stretched almost to the factor of 5, which as we know is the maximum factor that rubber is supposed to stretch. Now again, look at the uh, evenly spaced markers here. When I start winding, you can see that of course this stretches a lot more in the beginning, while this is basically still relaxed. And when I start spinning, you can see that these actually move almost unchanged. And here the stretch immediately becomes very big. So this means there's already plenty of force here. And now when we are reaching the end of the maximum elongation, you can see that this changes. Now we got larger distances here too. Go for one more winding. And now you see that it is really stretched wide on all sides. And once I release, everything slowly goes back to normal. This is pretty promising. I think with the stronger rubber and larger wheel here, so that we can use more rubber, this could make sense because really only the last, I would say, four, maybe five windings are powerful enough to do anything serious with it. Like, for example, repeating a full auto uh, crossbow. But um, that's fine because I can simply add some more windings by using a larger wheel and also, of course, stronger rubber. <laughs> In case you're interested in seeing my advance on this, I frequently upload new stuff on Facebook, like small videos and photos and so on. My Facebook page link is down there and I'd actually be pleased if you would show up. So I hope you liked this short little episode because that's it for today. <laughs> Thanks and bye bye.